Um, welcome again to the tower. This is the talk on Topper by Maxim Alt and Dario Rapizardi. Again, the ILC channel for questions is hash DC6 hyphen talks hyphen tower on Freenode. And also, could I remind um, people with questions to wait until they've got a microphone? Because otherwise, we can't hear you. Righty ho, there you go. Hi, so this is the project that we've been nursing in, in Intel probably for past few months, uh, three, four months, and um, nothing's definite here. We don't know what's, what it's going to be like. We're still forming and scoping it, and uh, it would be great to get your opinion on what, what, what are we doing and if you like it and get some discussion going. So in the end, we'll have some demo. But for now, I want to talk about what, what Topper is and what it isn't. So um, that's a lot of words here. But in general, it's, uh, we realized, and you know, as a big car corporation realized that free software gives a lot of choices here. And at the opportunities with basically grew exponentially, and the definition of uh, in the definition of solutions that uh, any of those companies could provide. Uh, one of those things is that Intel hardware has got um, a lot of, uh, a lot big, big spectrum of different combinations in the, available in the market. Same time, the software that enabled by the free software, right, the software, the choice, also the spectrum of choices became uh, really, really uh, large. So the challenges that we faced is that having our ecosystem quite large and and dispersed and uh, including OS operating system vendors and independent software vendors and people who are using it and and uh, working on defining a solution and and uh, creating a solution, there is problems with maintenance and support and. Uh, uh, we also realized that every single time that somebody try to uh, try to test their devices and try to test their their, their computer, and uh, this information is gone. We don't know about it, whether it worked or whether it didn't work. If it's a big company, we probably hear about that it didn't work, but we don't. This information is basically gone and it's dispersed. And in in general, we would like to also have some kind of inf intelligence built in in terms of hardware and software dependency and the relationship between them. So, and the project has been, uh, was born just from uh, first steps that Intel did for, with the free software. I mean, we just realized that using, uh, using Linux OS, well, we got a lot of questions uh, from people who never, who never were working with Linux before and um, system integrators, and they were asking whether, well, how do we know if some things will work with, with your equipment? And if it doesn't work, what, what do we need to do in order to make it work? So we, we were thinking about something more generic, but now we're scoping it down to be a little bit less generic and having um, a solution that is en encompasses the open source database, or I would say knowledge base, that um, captures all the tests that have been done previously with uh, various kernels, with various OSs, various hardware, um, that tracks and knows software and hardware dependencies, and uh, the system requirements that for every single device that, that we're using. We also wanted to see if we can apply um, open source philosophy into the support and maintenance. So th this is quite new to to the corporations, is that if we can create a, a collabor collaborative communities and equipment with the tools to and utilities to resolve the problem. So it's not just a website or um, a database or an expert system. It's, uh, it's an, a collaboration, it's a community that that we, we basically form with every single 
problem and device. And we will utilize this way also dispersiveness in localization and customization. Let's say there is a, some device that it's particular for uh, Spanish market, right? And it's the scalability of those issues is very difficult to do if we're not uh, deferring the support, if we're not uh, customizing and localizing uh, the support structure. And it definitely has to be opened. <coughs> So this is just a demonstration of the complexity of the problem. And uh, uh, if we have a client, OS, client Linux OS system and we have a bunch of, see this cloud of the open source packages there and different versions of kernel, of Mesa, X, Alsa, it's all in that cloud. So the question comes out, well, don't, what do we need to do in order to um, support ICH7 if we have to, if we have NVIDIA, if we have uh, NVIDIA and high definition audio and SATA drives, what kind of packages do we need to use? And problem is actually get worse if we start to increase the granularity to features. Let's say uh, if we have, um, if we talk about suspend, we want to so suspend to RAM or suspend to disk, if we're talking about the power management. And uh, if we have integrated device into a chipset or it's a non-integrated non device, so things get really, really messy and um, the choices are really not really clear. What do we need to have in the system to provide the right, um, the right set of packages? So the question is, what's the minimal set of packages we, we need to pick up from this big cloud in order to make it work? So there's a lot of definitely goals and benefits we're looking with this knowledge base. Uh, but uh, most of our partners, we realize that they are really Linux non-savvy, they don't know what to do. So we need to provide them these tools, right? So this is also has to be a trusted resource of information that they know that if they go into this, used to this solution, then they are going to, to get a credible, credible uh, resolution. Now in terms of operating system vendors, so we believe that's a lot. It's also very important um, solution because if they would use, um, that framework, then uh, they could use this knowledge to, of relationship between software and hardware in order to build distribution in the right way to support, uh, to support hardware from, you know, in the first place. So um, uh, it is a trusted resource of information and also it, it, it could help direct their development f uh, to tackle most of the critical hardware issues, let's say, uh, I want to know which device has really supported the list and I want to target the development of, of, uh, of the OS to, to cover those issues. So this, is, will, this will expose the gaps much faster and much easier. Oop. I think, yep. So this is the questions that, that basically the framework is supposed to answer. So if supposedly we have a, we have a solu software solution that software stack identifies. So the question is, is the specified hardware fully supported with this OS and the software stack? Or what hardware could be fully supported with what I have? Or if not, what do I need to do in order to ensure the support? And we need to make an, an exception for both skilled and non-skilled users. And for operating system vendors, uh, what software do I need to have in my distribution to support um, any given set of hardware? So here's the, some analogy with what, also with that framework. What, uh, there's many, many different analogies that we could come up with. First one is, is the internet, right? I mean, in the beginning, in the 90s, we had, uh, vast vast spectrum of data that was pretty much chaotic until Google came up 
and you know we could just right now type in the question or type in uh, something we will try to find and we have some kind of organization systematic way of ordering the information same thing is with open source software right we have analogy of creating a f a food right here so let's assume that we have this cloud of open so open source software and it's raw ingredients for us it's a bunch of packages right and we have the restaurants that we call them restaurants, right? The Red Hat and Novell. So they basically take these packages and, and prepare for us the food, right? We need to pay, and it's uh, good, maybe tasty or not. It depends on the, on, the, on, the, on the taste, but no hassle, you know, no wasted time on cooking. So Debian represents this supermarket where we can go and pick stuff up from the shelves. I have a question? Uh, I, I'm not sure why Debian itself isn't a uh, restaurant in your uh, analogy. We do provide systems for end users to use. It could be. It could be a restaurant. It is. Because my wife is running a Debian system now. She didn't go to any restaurant. I didn't pre-cook or anything for her. We, I just took the latest uh, Debian installer, shoved it in, she installed it. I didn't install it for her, so she was eating prepackaged food from Joey Hess. <laughs> well, what this probably mo most m means is that if you want to cook at home, if yes, you, the, if you the, choose Debian to use it home. you is both. It's a um, restaurant that also has a do-it-yourself kitchen area where you can go and cook your own food if you want to. Yeah, so that's, well, it, all it's I'm more about... This, I want to this slide kind of makes Debian seem less complete than say Ubuntu and Red Hat that pro offer things to the end users, and I object to that. I think we are fully capable as any commercial offering. The second point I want to make is, uh, I should have asked this earlier, I'm confused, right? Is this driver framework, isn't it mostly to get uh, closed source drivers into an yeah. operating system? Well. Uh, I'll, start, I'll start with the second question. Is that nothing has to do with closed source or open source drivers. And we just want to make the system work, right? This is this nothing has to do with that. Uh, and first question is a little bit more complicated, right? Uh, we do want to we do want to um, cultivate people to cook at home because they want to make they they know what they like, right? They customize their taste to whatever they want to do. They, they want to do meat, you know, they're vegetarians, they, they, they like spicy food. I don't know if we have a flexible enough infrastructure to make it happen for people who don't really know how to cook right now, right? So we're talking about people who don't know how to, yeah, they just, they come to this big supermarket and I see so much stuff and it's like, well, what am I supposed to do to, to do my taste? So that's, that's what it's, it, it's not to put anybody down, right? Um, and not to say, well, this is the restaurant and you better pay to get a good food. It's basically, well, I don't know what to do if, right, if I, I have to satisfy my taste. So, um, and that's basically what the last three, three bullets says. It's like, we want to have a recipe book and we want to give them a kitchen supplies to, to, to cook and satisfy what the, their needs. So what is Topper, right? So <coughs> we envision it, do we envision it as like a devicepedia, Wikipedia, like uh, I don't know, in US we have opentable.com, it's also analogy to restaurants, so anybody can go and say, well this restaurant was good, the food wasn't good. The servers, you know, service really suck, and you know, and they put put different uh, uh, opinions on on uh, uh, on OpenTable.com. Same thing with Amazon. You can give your ratings, and anybody could basically say if they liked the book or not. And eBay, same thing. Uh, whether it's a set of papers, you know, whether it's a collaboration tool, it's a collection to recipes, you know. The answer here is 
all of the above. And the f topper is the framework to identify the device readiness to use. So that's, um, and what it is exactly, Dario made a prototype here and um, he's gonna show a demo, but in the, in the beginning we'll, uh, we'll talk about what actually prototype look like. So here. Thank you. <clears throat> well, um, I will talk a little bit about the prototype in itself and perhaps it's a little bit rough in the way it looks. But, uh, well, Topper actually is uh, an expert system, a core set of libraries that provide different kind of information about the relationship between the hardware and software components. Um, as any expert system, it has information and data in it. So in one of the first things that you have to make sure when you have lot of, loads of, of data in expert system is to verify and make sure that the integrity and uh, viability of the data is it's correct. So <clears throat> basically, I will start showing a little bit what kind of data will Topper achieve. Uh, we have a very diverse scope since source, sources can be wide and diverse. It could be any kind of user of any distribution, uh, large amounts of data, and there's a need for automated validation process, offline validation, and so there's a proposal to have a two steps validation process. First, the first one is an offline process in which will apply techniques and very common in data mining, and then an online process, which is more like uh, to correct glitches and fix stuff in a more interactive way, like Wikipedia or something like that. So, <clears throat> Speaking about the offline validation process, let, let's imagine that you are a 23 years old guy and had your driving license one year back, recently moved to a foreign country and want to buy a 16 volt red car. Now also think that you've been in jail one day because of speeding when you was a teenager. Actually, this is almost real. I had a black car, not a red one. Uh, <laughs> Now imagine that you go to an insurance company, okay? So <clears throat> for them, since odds are, you will likely have an accident in the next year. So what do they do? Well, option A, you won't get assured at all. And option B, the insurance company will assure you, but perhaps with a more expensive uh, policy rate. So at the end, it's just a matter of threshold, okay? Uh, the, the analogy with this, okay, um, let, we are gathering data from end users. Let's suppose, I mean, lots of people input information about some kind of a specific video card. Um, when you collect data, you always need to have a, some kind of tool. I mean, to collect the, the hardware information and the software information is very easy. But then when you enter the field of what is videos working, then you are more in, in, in a cloud. So basically it depends of, of what the general consensus of, of the user is. Um, this process, what it does basically is to try to detect if you have a, like you know, 100 guys with a certain video card saying that it works good for, for, for them, and then shows up one guy with the same setup saying that it doesn't, you had the, the, the odds are that that guy is actually okay, not being quite honest in the, in the input of the data. And you discard it or not. Actually, you set up the threshold to, set up to see when to take into account that kind of, of information or not. So, more technically speaking, when you receive this anonymous information, you have a, make several validation process, one of the classical ones, syntax error, empty attributes, data with illogical values. I mean, this is the, like the, the, the features that you put on purpose that, I mean, if some system, some test says that it doesn't boot but has X working, the guy is probably in lion, so you discard it. Then you have a removal of non-relevant data attributes. Um, you have a, 
a test case and you have several test cases and you are looking for the behavior of you know, networking Ethernet. And you can easily see using relief measure if those, some of those attributes are um, be able, I mean, have any influence in the, in the scope that you are looking for. Then you can test and evaluate the data against the data you already have using, well, common algorithms such as base for training and like tenfold validation. And well, with a very large set of data, we can support a very high uh, reliability threshold. So <clears throat> basically, it's, it's, it's about having loads and loads of, of, of data. OK. Then there's the online validation and have community-based efforts in information-related projects, just as Wikipedia, which seems to be very accurate. Think of it as a devicepedia, but unlike Wikipedia, it is not meant to be entirely dependent on, on, on community input. So basically what it does is, first of all, okay, the automated process will process the information, trying to clean it up, and any glitches or any missing information will can then be fixed by human intervention. So, <clears throat> I don't know, no. I can show then a little bit prototype about um, what will be like to one of these um, tools to, to gather data. I have it a little bit difficult because my monitor is not working, so if I get... So basically, this is Cherry Topper. I mean, Topper in itself, it's uh, the data and set of libraries to gather the information. Then you can easily build applications. Well, applications is very pretentious, like this, to access the data. This has a very few things just to play it out. I will first take a look to the feeding process. Actually, this. Well, then you have a program, top scanner. I wish I run it one second. Let me have the microphone. So meanwhile, I would wanted to say that um, uh, we've We've done the prototype based on a um, database, the hardware database that was given uh, by Ubuntu. And was, we had to about 200,000 entries from, uh, from Ubuntu and a few entries that Dario made from, by, by Linux from Extremadura. Thank you. Well, this is basically, basically how the data looks like. Um, these are prolog facts. Actually, I'm an XML hater. So I prefer these kind of things. And you have the definitions of everything, PCI devices, USB devices, software packages, loaded kernel modules, CPU, whatever. You can also have um, definitions about features. Just adding, the, I mean, this is very handy, handy because <clears throat> you can solve the constraints with just ignoring some of the, of the facts or just and looking for the missing facts, etc. And you can have an application that also adds information about the features, for example, if the sound works or doesn't work. But, or have something like this, for example. That just reads the the data, and 
according to the data that I just uploaded, it asks me questions if he finds a display controller questions about the X environment work or the work. I mean, for the prototype, I didn't want to get into the details about what is, um, for example, sound. What is sound working? I mean, perhaps I'm playing a wave file. It sounds, but not very good quality. Perhaps some guy has a 5.1 uh, audio car and doesn't work at all. So this are and um, it's a very difficult area to get into. So this is mostly um, a thing about the tools or the definition of the users. It's not quite the scope at this moment, but once you answer all the formula, you can put comments and this information gets into a QE to get them validated and in an offline mode. Okay. So <clears throat> what it, once you have the, the data, what is the logic um, behind the uh, topper? I mean, in several systems, uh, expert systems regarding hardware and, and software, always the, the minimum uh, subject of, of, of information of, I don't know, how to say, of information is the, the device. Um, here in Topper, we say that the minimum subject of information is the, the test and itself. I mean, a whole set of computer with hardware, software, and its behavior in itself. To put it a little more clear, we had a relationship between hardware components, which is established by standards like HCP bus, PCI bus, different socket types for CPUs. Then you have relationship between software packages established by package dependencies, but and how to define the relationship between hardware and software. I mean, to say that to make this kind of piece of hardware to work, you need this and this and this software packages installed. <clears throat> so you have easy cases, for example, with the hardware behavior is defined by just one software component. IDE support, you just have support in the kernel and you will have it. You have uh, hard cases when the behavior depends on not only the kernel but also in some external software packages. Accelerated X, for example, you have the kernel and modules, you have uh, Nexor modules, you can even have some proprietary modules, I mean, who knows? It can, it's, it can get very, very difficult. And then you have impossible cases, which are most likely to be bugs, but which happen. For example, some components that work, but if you plug in some device in the machine, some kernel module is loaded and the feature stops working. It's typically, for example, yes, in software suspend, you put something that doesn't be high and doesn't reload well on resume and it just screws the the feature. So <clears throat> big question again, how to define software and hardware dependencies? The short answer is that you cannot define, but uh, you can track and hopefully tracking will lead to a definition. So This is the logic behind toppers. So let's think that user A installed an X GNU Linux distro with a 2.6.15 kernel and the software suspend it's working out of the box. So we can easily say that Linux 2.6.15 kernel makes and software suspend works, okay? Now we have a user B installing the same distro on same hardware, but he forgets to set up the swap partition. So and even when we have the same software packages, we can say that you don't, you don't only need 2615, but a swap partition to make the feature work. We can keep going because um, user C installs same distro with a swap partition on a different PC, but his video card has problems with frame buffers on suspend to UE locks, and he never resumes. So. Same constraints as before, but you don't uh, you 
you cannot have then this particular video card. <clears throat> and it can get even more, more hurry. For example, user D with same setup as A blocks a USB keyboard that doesn't work again on resume. So it looks like he has security patches applied, so, so he has different versions in core libraries. And then you have a problem here because you don't really know if what it's raking the feature is the USB device he plugged or it is some kind of regression in the software packages and you start becoming nervous. But if several users with same setup as T but without the USB device can software suspend, then the possible causes are narrowed. At the end, it's what developers do in uh, BTS. I mean, trying to figure out the problems. This is kind of automation of the problems using the same logic that we, we use behind. <clears throat> so one part of Topper's logic is to identify those constraints, and the other part is to retrieve the information in a smart way. So um, yeah. I can talk a little bit about information retrieval. <coughs> well, this is kind of in the expert query um, screen. It would be useful if, if I were a, a better web designer. And the thing is that here, you just pick up any constraints that you want. I mean, this and this, uh, that's okay. You have a uh, PCI devices, you have a uh, USB devices, software packages, distributions, ID devices, kernel modules, features, CPUs, and well, machine types, it's so like tax. So basically, you can ask things like, OK, am I looking for this Wi-Fi car? And OK, just that, that's not working. OK, and you have a one result. And this is what I meant about the minimum type of information being the, <clears throat> the test. And you have information about the test, the distribution, CPU, PCI bus, ID bus, USB, software packages, feature, etc. You can also have um, let's see, look for a bigger one. If you have a bigger one, you can retrieve trans transversal information of, of etc. I mean, you can gather all the data that you want. This is a, the roughest example because you have access to everything. Let's look at another one. About how to focus that kind of um, information retrieval. Well, several parties seem to be interested in this kind of information. And in the particular case of Spain, there happen to be lots of um, OEMs and clone builders that just want to ship their boxes with Linux and out of the box. Um, I don't know if you are aware of, but in, in Spain, like every community has its own Debian-based distribution. So <clears throat> they tend to install those kind of distributions, but sometimes the distribution don't work. I mean, for example, Linux cannot work with that kind of hardware, while Linux do, and the OEM gets very nervous because he cannot um, deliver. So, government government agencies that also wants to buy hardware for for the distribution uh, need to take into account that some, most of the times people in government that buys hardware are public servants. I mean, people not. Uh, uh, savvy technically, so they will they need actually some kind of central re information of rep uh, central repository of information to to pick up hardware and that that works. Also, it's useful for localized distro builders to know what uh, made the neighbor to make the hardware work. 
or in a more general sense, we can, well, upstream developers looking for regressions in their software, big distributions interest in the general quality of its distribution and its derivatives, big distributions interested in possible causes of derivatives. You can also have statistics about um, the most used um, hardware piece not being supported and that kind of, of stuff. Uh, more on that uh, later. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> just an example about local OEM. I mean, o OEMs usually just want to, the, to answer the question is, which distribution should I install to, to make it work? Okay, you can fill up the forms, or you can actually, for example, this is the, the data test that I just got. I will erase any kind of information about um, software distribution, whatever. So um, this is what a constraint solver is all about. I mean, you have one piece of information and the guy looks. I mean, those information data was spe specifying, mostly sure, my, my laptop. That's why I'm running. And, and it gives very too many possibilities to, to make, uh, for example, This is upper. No, new thumbs. I don't know, for example, this one. Well, this is another. He found two distributions. Anyway, you can make, you can focus the question re accordingly to the, okay, thank you, to the, the scope. So. What do we need to go forward? Uh, well, we, we need to finish architecting the solution. Suddenly, we contracted Linux savvy or open source software partners. Detailed scoping of the data structure. It's good for both packaging words, dev or RPM. Uh, have a publicly accessible knowledge base. And populate the expert system with existing open source solution. We are also um, working with conversations with OSDL so regarding Topper. It will be nice also to, has, to, to have a Topper hosted on Elliot if some DDs are interested in, in this. And well, begin data gathering. I mean, most of the data has been given, given by uh, Ubuntu from, from their first um, hardware detection tool that they had. The other part was from the Linux in their own labs. And okay. Just before finishing it, for example, this is pretty neat. Um, I did this. Uh, last night on the hack lab um, for it's some time is slow it takes like 30 seconds to gather data just this is looking for the top 20 most uses most used um, hardware devices that don't work so this is kind of a shame list because shows the vendors that um, currently don't have uh, too much support and um, Linux. Um, I don't know if I will be able to tell you, but actually Topper is a, a Python library and which you import and you can start asking normal questions like get all PCI devices, get PCI devices from test. It also has some pretty neat um, free query and form. 
when you just send it the, the code block of prolog to the underlying engine, and well, this is it. This is ugly, okay. Just showing the first column. Well, this is the class of the devices, the vendor. When it says no, it well, looks like these devices are not present in PCI database. So it looks like this is even useful to complete that kind of information. So mostly looks like, um, well, PC TV cards, multimedia cards are working. We have some, well, some blasters here, over there. Well, looks like creative support is not very, very nice. Well, at the end, you, you, you can, I mean, it's so modular that you can build any kind of, of interface to, to the information. I mean, statistics and scopes. Whatever. So, you wanna Max, wanna finish with this? So, okay. so the main challenges of the this framework is that it has to be saturated with data because that that's the main property. This is main intellectual property of that that framework is uh, data, and it's not a code itself. It's not tools. It's not scripts that we write. It's it's the data. It's, very similar to Wikipedia, and uh, what makes Wikipedia Wikipedia and usability of it is that um, vast volume of data that's in there, right? So it's the same thing is here. Uh, so it has to get to a saturation point that people will start using it. And um, there are issues with saying who, yeah, how is this? Data about data integrity and trusting the validity of the entry data. Who is the authority? If we need uh, a committee uh, to commit the changes, to commit uh, um, facts into this data knowledge base, right? Then the scoping is a problem. Saying, well, what does it mean as device works or what device doesn't work, right? If what if it works slow? What if it works uh, not fast enough? What if only four channels of audio work, I know it's quality, is quality a problem, right? Um, generic interface to a validation process is also would be required. And what is a product going to be? What's a framework? Is it just a website? You know, what is a knowledge management solution here? Uh, you know, it's a, always a struggle how to define it's a good usable, usable package so, so people would use it. From uh, from every single one who uses a desktop or laptop to a system integrator or OEMs, um, as yeah, as we said, the concept success depends on the mass adoption, and it could be mirrored to our RPM world from yes, and um, the problem is that the Linux kernel doesn't like separation of the core from the driver code. And that's at the problem, that represents a big problem because dependencies are going to continue uh, representing the complex systems. So uh, here, <laughs> why is it topper? So that, that's the name that Dario came up with and that's the, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> And um, would like to have your questions and feedback. Yes. How is the data going to be gathered? Is it going to be gathered anonymously, or is it going to be identified somehow by email address or something? Because I can see, for example, that people will send data, and maybe they have made uh, a wrong selection, and they're going to make uh, a re they're going to resubmit it with uh, the corrected information. Can you then still match the original report with the new report so that you can say, okay, the original report is invalidate? Uh, or not valid anymore, uh, because if you get a, long, a lot of error in reports that are later corrected, you, you will get uh, dirty data. Mm -hmm. Well, actually for the prototype, I mean, since most of the data was coming for kind of trusted sources, I mean, we didn't really even start thinking about it. That was one of the reasons and of the proposal to host it on Elliot, I mean, to have a, 
suggestions and help and that kind of, of, of stuff. I mean, because it can get very neat, I mean, the possibilities of, the, of this, but this needs to be very, you know, so many specialities and that will be useful, okay. But so far, nothing regarding the, that. I was also wondering about the data gathering, um, whether you plan to make it completely automated or whether there's going to be a lot of user interaction during it. And mm -hmm. I think it's going to reflect on how much data you get. Yeah. And also whether we can tie it in with things like the installer so you automatically get a report of an installed system and that kind of thing, what your plans are on that. And I also wanted to congratulate. Actually, well, actually, since this is tended to be like, I mean, this is useful for multiple distros, for example. Yeah. So at the end, Actually, right now, many distros has something like that together. So it will be just a matter of um, fixing or adjusting the format. So it will end up being, you know, depending of each distro, and or you can you know, put some kind of, of uh, program to download. Um, I know that's got to be, it's not possible to execute something directly from the browser unless, you know, shall up it, sign it, and so on. Not very nice stuff, so um, it will end up being yes, and depending of of each distro, and the tool that they have, and what they do to define okay and sound is working or sound is not, and the adjustment will be, I mean, if you, for example, this you have uh, two distributions, and you have users using the same hardware, and the same software packages, and some. Distros users says that sound doesn't work mostly, perhaps because of the detection tool, it's not very accurate about that. And well, better for distribution, he will be able to fix to fix it. I mean, it can leverage a, a lot of, of things. These things, even the the list of statistics. I mean, it can leverage a lot of things. Okay. I also, I just also wanted to congratulate you on working on this because I was, I was part of an unsuccessful. Thing at two dev comps to go to do some kind of hardware database, and I'm really happy to see it actually happening. So, congratulations. Well, well, thank you. Okay, time's up. Well, thank you very much.